This is the vertebrate evolutionary tree activity. Directions. Open the fossil record of vertebrates PDF. Now I have mine open in this next tab. All right. I can scroll through and see that I have multiple different organisms. All right. Next step says analyze each of the fossils and record important characteristics. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Noticing my first organism lived 540 million years ago. That's MYA, million years ago. Let's look at the description. What was this thing like? Well, it had a skull and notochord, or spinal cord. Okay, that sounds like a vertebrate to me. Again, vertebrates have that spinal cord and spinal column. It swam using a tail. I'd probably jot that down. And one large fin that stretched from its head down to its soft body. These animals use gills to breathe. So looking through here, important characteristics that jump out to me. I know it's a vertebrate, but here's the ones that are going to be important to me. It swam using a tail, so I'd have tail. Uh, it had a fin, that would be one of the appendages, and it used gills. All right, now that seems important because that matches many of the characteristics of one of my vertebrate groups. Let's see what else we have. Okay, a little bit later. So the first organism was 540 million years ago. This one lived 420 million years ago. So it's much more recent than that first one. This is a placoderm. This is a prehistoric fish covered in large armored plates. Huh. Now, I don't know of many fish covered in armored plates. The rest of their bodies were covered in scales or skin. Okay, scale seems to match one of the characteristics I've seen before. These fish, oh, so I know it's a fish, did not have jaws but did have gills. Okay, so there's that gills popping up again. And finally, their skeletons were made mostly of cartilage. All right, so things I might have jotted down would have been armored plates, scales, gills, skeleton of cartilage. Let's check the next one. All right, again, this is another organism at 420 million years ago. So I'm noticing these two fish, both has existed at the same time. This is a lobed finned fish. And I can see it in the picture, that's fins uh, kind of look like little arms almost. This fish is known as a lobe finned fish. These early fish had paired fins, which means fins on both sides. Okay, that sounds familiar. Jaws, scales, teeth, and gills. I would be writing down all of these things just to keep this in order. Oddly, the fins of these fish were jointed, huh? Like the arms and legs of early tetrapods, which were four legged creatures. So I have a fish with fins that have joints, like elbows or wrists. That seems like a characteristic that might be passed down. These fish also had skeletons made of bone. I'm coming down to my next one. All right, again, oh, interesting. This is another fish that existed at 420 million years ago. This is a ray-finned fish. These fish are described as ray-finned fish. Their fins had webs of skin between bony spines. Now, if you've ever seen a fish, that sounds very familiar. These fins were not jointed or arm-like. Now that seems like it's important because the previous one did have jointed fins. Hmm. These fish also have scales, gills, jaws, teeth, and skeletons made of bone. These all seem like important characteristics that match one of the groups that I know very well. These organisms were so successful that they are still around today. They are all the fish in the world. Interesting. So all of a sudden, I can see that this species, 420 million years ago, is largely unchanged. 420 years ago, fish figured out a body shape that works really well for that environment. Since there's no pressure, since there's no uh, natural selection pressure, these fish are going to be unchanged. Small changes here and there, but the body shape and the structure, largely unchanged. So this is going to be the end of one of my paths because I just discovered one of the groups of vertebrates. And in fact, the first vertebrate group to evolve was fish. Let's do one more. This last one is 400 million years ago. 
This is the first tetrapod. This animal was the first true tetrapod. It moved with four limbs. In fact, that's what tetrapod means. Tetra, four, pod, legs. So four legs. While it couldn't live on land, these early creatures were the first to move out of the water for short periods. This is possible because they had lungs. Interesting, so lungs developed before animals came on land. However, their front legs were better suited for paddling than walking, and they still needed to lay their eggs in water. Hmm, now that characteristic seems new, but also seems to match a modern vertebrate group. I want to make sure I have some of these characteristics written down. Now, this would be a good point for you to go ahead and pause the video and continue reading through the descriptions, jotting down characteristics, because that's going to be important when you try and organize the vertebrates in the evolutionary tree. Again, go ahead and pause the video as you read through. And when you come back to Kip Play, we'll pick up with the vertebrate evolutionary tree. All right, the third document you'll need is this vertebrate evolutionary tree. Now it's going to look really tiny. So I'm going to go ahead and click View, Zoom. Let's try 100%. Yeah, it looks better. All right, at the bottom here it says drag the fossils below into their correct position on the evolutionary tree of vertebrates. And here's all the organisms that you just went through. I know that that first organism was going to be this fish. I know it for two reasons. One, it had the most simple characteristics. And two, it's also the oldest. Remember, the older the fossil, the earlier it is as a common ancestor. So I'm going to take this oldest fossil, I'm going to go ahead and drag it up into the top position because I know this animal went first. And if that happens, send it back. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to look for the next ones that evolved. So out of this fish, there was three paths that came out. And looking at this image, I can see that two of these paths ended. I know that one of those is going to be modern fish. Right? We decided, we talked about how 420 million years ago, this ray-finned fish really became sort of the modern fish that we know. Natural selection figured out fish pretty quickly. So I can put that in this position. So these early fish, some of that population evolved into ray-finned fish that we know today. So this is done. And correctly, we identified that fish were the first group of vertebrates to evolve. But what else did we have at that time? Again, I'm going to be looking at these years. So I have the lobed fin fish, and I have this placoderm. So let's go ahead and move these up and figure out where they should go. Now here's where I have to use my characteristics. The placoderm had armor, no jaws, but it did have gills. It had fins. The lobed fin fish had jaws and gills and scales. And the important one here is these these jointed appendages. Now that's a term that we've been seeing again and again and again, jointed appendages, things like limbs. Now that sounds like legs or arms or wings. Yeah, you're correct. This lobed fin fish continued on to evolve into other of these groups. So I know that I can put the lobed fin fish in this position since it's a common ancestor of all the other vertebrates. It turns out that this placoderm while super cool looking, didn't evolve into the modern vertebrates that we know today. If I scroll down, I'm going to look for that tetrapod, the one we read about next. Again, this creature lived in the water, which is a shared characteristic with the lobed fin fish. It laid eggs in the water, which is a shared characteristic of the fish. It had the jointed appendages, just like the fish. But this one had a new characteristic, right? It had the ability to breathe air. It had those lungs. So that was the next step. That was the thing that evolved next. Now, this is not a modern vertebrate, but you'll notice that it gave rise to two different organisms. If you have your notes in front of you on the characteristics of these different organisms, you'll be able to track the changes to characteristics as you go up the tree of life. 
what you're really looking for is the final the final organisms. You're going to be looking for amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds. Thinking about how the characteristics from their ancestors were passed, how they were changed, how new ones developed, and how they ended in these sort of end positions. Let's go back to our instructions here. Now one thing you might want to do is you may want to turn in your cladogram. You may want to turn in your evolutionary tree, this, so that we can check it to see that you have everything done correctly. If your tree has some mistakes, it's going to make answering the questions very difficult. So again, broad steps. You're going to need to make sure that you read through all of the fossils, noting the important characteristics. Pay special attention to the years. Remember, older means it's going to be one of the older common ancestors, right? Newer organisms can't evolve before something older. Once you've read through and taken your notes, go ahead and organize these organisms into the evolutionary tree. Remember, sometimes they end. The ray-finned fish, that's the end of that evolutionary path. 420 million years ago, this fish figured it out. But some of these other populations are going to change over time. And then once you've done that, use your evolutionary tree and answer the questions below. Like always, we're a text, phone call, or email away. Hope that helps, and good luck.